Thanks to Foreo for partnering with me on this video. On the moon, the real estate market is skyrocketing. While I'm being a little tongue in cheek when I say that, it is true that interest in the moon as a permanent base for human life is increasing. Before December 2022, the number of countries and political unions that had successfully sent probes either to orbit or land on the moon has risen to six. America, Russia, Japan, Europe, China, and India have all sent spacecraft to our closest lunar neighbor. The motives behind this vary even within country. For some, it is about scientific advancement. For others, the moon offers rich possibilities for economic gain. But whatever the motivations, knowing where to set up those first lunar bases is becoming increasingly important. And that means mapping out the moon's surface and features is more vital than ever. Fortunately for everyone involved, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been circling the moon from an altitude as low as 50 kilometers from the moon's surface since 2009. Its mission has been to map out the moon's surface in detail and to enable scientific discoveries that help us understand the processes that take place up there. We have spoken about what it has seen before, but we've only scratched the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the moon's haunting beauty and deep mystery. What has the LRO found up there? How does it pertain to mankind's reaching for the world outside our atmosphere? And how may its next generation take that search even further? I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and today in my sixth video on the LRO, you're about to discover the answers to those questions. As a quick recap, the LRO was launched by NASA in 2009 as a means of mapping out the lunar surface in hitherto unmatched detail. But when this was achieved after just one year, NASA shifted LRO's mission to investigate areas of particular scientific interest. We've spoken in my last video of the highest and lowest points on the moon, as well as relays, and some truly impressive impact craters. But that is not the thing of greatest value to future explorers. In fact, one of the most important features on the moon is a humble hole in the ground. This is a pit crater. By evaluating the shadow, scientists can discern that it's a massive 100 meters deep and 100 to 115 meters across, depending on where you measure it around its sheer edge. Unlike impact craters, which are formed from space debris crashing down onto the moon's surface, it is thought that pit craters like this one are formed by a cavity collapsing deep underground, similar to the process that forms sinkholes here on Earth. This provides further proof that under the surface of the moon, there may exist networks of caves and vents, possibly formed by flowing lava long ago. The moon is cold now, so these lava tubes lie empty, but this provides astronauts and scientists with a unique opportunity. If they do exist, it's incredibly likely that lava tubes will provide a remarkable, easily accessible record of the geological processes that shape the moon. They might be coated in interesting and rare minerals. On top of that, it's much easier to set up a base on the moon if your walls and ceiling are already formed for you. Lacking a magnetic field, or any real atmosphere, the surface of the moon is completely exposed to solar and cosmic radiation. Over time, this radiation could deliver a lethal dose to any would-be settlers. The only way to avoid this would be to line your buildings with thick materials to block out the radiation. But 100 meters of rock will do the same job just fine. If pit craters provide a gateway to cave systems 100 meters deep, astronauts may well pick out a site much like this one to settle on the lunar surface. Of course, any would-be settler will not just need protection from radiation to survive on the moon. They will also need access to water, and it's here that LRO has provided some more fascinating insights into the moon's surface processes. It was once thought that the surface of the moon was dead and dry. If water existed, it would only be found in small pockets in permanently shadowed regions. However, as LRO traveled over the lunar surface, 
it began to notice something unexpected. Trace amounts of water molecules could be found over the top of the surface regolith, the grey rock that makes up much of the moon. It turns out the moon is ever so slightly wet. This wetness was even observed to move around in a sort of lunar water cycle, both by region and by time of day. Around noon, when the moon's surface was hottest, the water seemed to dissipate, but then would return with the evening. Scientists do not understand everything about this process. Where did this water come from? Why did it not all evaporate into space? But LRO's observation means that the locations on the moon that might be viable for a lunar base is suddenly much wider. If this trace amount of water could be collected, you would not need to build your base next to a permanently shadowed region. Which is convenient, because PSRs are far colder than we at first thought. The moon has very little axle tilt, a little over a single degree. This means that at the poles there exist craters that are never pointed directly at the sun. No matter what time of day or year, the sun never casts light into their mysterious basins. Naturally, a location that never sees any sunlight is bound to be cold. However, scientists were not prepared for exactly how cold it turned out these regions were. For context, at the equator, temperatures on the moon fluctuate between 120 degrees Celsius during the day and minus 130 degrees Celsius during the night. LRO houses a diviner instrument which uses seven thermal infrared channels to measure surface temperatures. With it, LRO found a polar crater that had temperatures as low as minus 250 degrees Celsius, making it the coldest temperature measured on any object in the entire solar system. That's colder than the average temperatures of Uranus, Neptune, or even Pluto. The crater edges shielding these areas from solar radiation might have created the perfect storage location for housing water ice. But other, more interesting, useful compounds could be found there too. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, dinitrogen, and argon perhaps. These compounds could be useful for settlers, and so accessing these materials might be extremely useful in spite of the chilling cold. But because it's so dark down in these craters, it's difficult to know for sure exactly which craters house what. It would be unfortunate to build a scientific base, only to discover that the crater next to you was completely empty. Sadly, LRO's onboard camera, the LROC, is not capable of piercing this darkness. But there is a new camera circling the moon that can. The reason why I said in the intro that six countries had sent probes to the moon before December 2022 is that on the 16th of December, that number actually rose to seven. After a four and a half month journey, South Korea's Danuri probe just arrived in lunar orbit. NASA has actually been working closely with South Korea on Danuri, providing them with scientific expertise and communications and navigation support in a spirit of mutual international scientific collaboration. In thanks, South Korea's Kari space program gave NASA 7 kilograms of space on their Korea Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter, or Danuri as it's locally known. A composite word made from Dal, which means moon, and Nurida, which means enjoy. NASA considered what scientific instrument could be best placed on Danuri, and in the end, they went with a device known as ShadowCam, a younger sibling of LRO's own narrow angle camera, with one notable enhancement. Thanks to its 200 times sensitivity, it turns images like this into images like this. This incredibly clear image is of Shackleton Crater, found at the moon's south pole the first ever site photographed by LRO. And now, thanks to Danuri and ShadowCam, we can properly peer into its inner basin. It turns out that Shackleton does not look that different from many of the other craters on the moon. Its cratered floor is covered in bumpy hummocks. Sadly, there is no obvious ice here. Perhaps this is because Shackleton is a smaller crater, meaning that the temperatures within do not drop quite so low 
as would be needed for ice to reliably form. One point of interest is the clear trail left by a boulder as it rolled down the crater side, visible near the top of the image. Such tracks are common on the moon, as the lack of wind means that any disturbance of the dusty ground is never covered up again. This track could be extremely old. This is the only image released by Shadowcam so far. However, Danuri intends to orbit the moon for the next year at least. In that time, it will hopefully drive back the shadows on all of the moon's hidden terrain. So, there you have it. Thanks to the LRO, and now Danuri, the surface of the moon is being mapped in clearer and clearer detail. Processes such as the lunar water cycle are being understood more deeply, and the way is being paved for future missions to actually land on the moon through the discovery of compounds vital to human life. And that's not even mentioning the developing scientific understanding of the origins and history of the moon that is coming about as we uncover its geological record. When scientists one day arrive on the moon to study this record firsthand, it will be thanks to this data that they will know where to go. As the number of nations settling on the moon increases, they will rely more and more on LRO and Danuri's information to know where to construct. That's what excites me most about all this. We are, metaphorically, brick by brick, laying the foundation for possible future civilizations. Thanks to the knowledge being developed by these orbiters and pathfinders, one day, millions of humans might just call the moon by another name. Home. Footsteps on the moon last essentially forever. They have a timeless quality thanks to the lack of lunar winds, meaning they could last for thousands of years. While no human will ever live as long as that, that same timelessness is something that we may sometimes wish we had for our skin. If that's something you or your loved ones have ever thought about, our partner on today's video might have just the device for you. The Foreo Bear is the new gadget by Foreo Sweden that helps relax away facial and neck muscle tension through the clever use of T-sonic pulsations and microcurrent technology. It sends those pulsations and gentle electrical currents into the outer layers of your skin, massaging away your tension and stimulating blood flow. With just two minutes of use a day over a 30-day period, using the bear can energize and firm up the 69 muscles in the face and neck, reducing signs of aging. If this is something for you, or if you're looking for the perfect gift for your significant other, follow my link in the description below to check it out. Go ahead and give it a try. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the other LRO videos about cool features on the moon here. And a big thanks to my patrons and members for supporting the channel. If you like what I do and want your name added to this list, check the links below. All the best and see you next time.